Hey everyone, Jeremy Grayson here with a tutorial on 3D Studio Max and how to prepare your models for ex export into Mudbox so that they retain their hard edge creases. To demonstrate what we're, um, what we're trying to achieve here is we have this model right here and we want to have subdivision inside of Mudbox and hang on to all of these hard edges. Okay. Um, let's say you maybe have a weapon, a blade, and you want that hard edge to remain um, on your model. So what happens when we don't prepare our model for hard edge creases and we bring that mesh into Mudbox? Um, this mesh is actually this one with a Turbo Smooth modifier on it. And what happens is we bring this mesh into Mudbox and we add a subdivision. And we get this. And it starts to subdivide, but it also starts to deform our mesh. And the more subdivision that we add inside of Mudbox, the further away it gets from the hard edge creases of our original shape, okay? So how do we achieve this? How do we get a hard edge crease on, a, on our geometry and also get the subdivision that we want for maybe sculpting some details, okay? So I'm gonna go over two methods that I know of for doing this inside of 3D Studio Max, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and hide these um, so they're not distracting and go ahead and open or reveal our two methods that we have. So on the left, we are gonna be using um, smoothing groups for our model. And on the right, we're gonna be using another type of method with no smoothing groups, but we're gonna be adding extra geometry to our mesh, okay? So these are gonna be our two methods for importing uh, our mesh into Mudbox to retain those hard edges, okay? So let's go over our smoothing group method. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click element mode, and if we have anything selected, I'm just going to go ahead and clear and do this um, from scratch, and go ahead and hit click your face mode, and the rule with uh, smoothing groups is that if you want to have everything to have a crisp and hard edge, then you're going to want to have different smoothing groups for the different faces, the faces that are tangent to other faces. So um, just a good rule of thumb is that if you have a face, um, you want to apply a smoothing group to it that uh, doesn't share a common vertice with the next face. Um, so we have to skip faces in some of these instances, okay? So we want hard edge creases on all of this, so we're going to go ahead and apply a smoothing group of one to the ones we have selected. And then we're going to select these other sides, and we're going to select a smoothing group of two, okay? And we're just going to do that for the remainder faces. And remember following that rule, like uh, if there's a vertice that shares, that's shared between a common face, you don't want to have those selected if you want a hard edge crease there. And we are going to select a smoothing group of three, and these are the last two, so four. Okay, so this is our smoothing group option, and this one is going to be our non-smoothing group option. I don't believe I have smoothing groups attached. I do. Let's clear all, just so we're not uh, accidentally selecting smoothing groups. Okay, so we want to apply a Turbo Smooth modifier to both of these to demonstrate what's going to happen inside a mud box um, when we start to add subdivisions inside mud box. But we can demonstrate this uh, quickly inside of 3D Studio Max. So with both of these selected, let's go ahead and apply a Turbo Smooth modifier to them. Okay, and you can see here on our smoothing group option just by default um, it doesn't have any of these edge loops so it's going to automatically deform this way um, but there's an option inside of our um, <clears throat> inside of our turbo smooth um, modifier here and it's surface parameters and if we click the smoothing groups then we can see what is going to happen inside a mud box um, when we have our hard edge creases by defined by our smoothing groups um, and we're getting that subdivision that we're looking for. So both of these are two different methods for um, bringing your hard edge models into Mudbox. And just to take a quick look at both of these, both of these have a, a subdivision or an iteration of just one. And you can kind of see the, what's going on with the geometry a little bit here. Um, where we added the extra geometry f um, to retain our shape, we're getting this type of 
uh, topology inside of, uh, or, or on our model. And that's exactly what's going to happen inside a mud box. And you just kind of got to be wary with mud box because mud box really loves squares and doesn't necessarily really love rectangles because we may be getting some artifacts in those areas, especially when we start to add subdivisions. You can see here that we're getting perfect squares, and here the squares are turning into rectangles the closer we get to those edges. So Mudbox can handle these types of rectangles. You really want to be careful of uh, rectangles that are very long and skinny because those are definitely going to be creating artifacts. So just try and keep your meshes as close to squares as possible um, for this hard edge. Um, for this hard edge process, and actually for any import that you bring into Mudbox, you really want to keep it as close to squares if you can if you can manage that. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and remove our Turbo Smooth on these on these meshes, and we're going to start to export our our uh, our meshes as uh, uh, to prepare them for import into Mudbox. Okay, so with our smoothing group model selected let's go ahead and hit export export selected and what we want to do is we want to export anything with smoothing groups as an FBX okay typically we have OBJ as an option for import into Mudbox but and we also can export as an FBX the problem with OBJ with um, smoothing groups is that it doesn't have any options for Mudbox to recognize those smoothing groups but FBX definitely does so we're gonna select an FBX for our smoothing group and we're gonna call it uh, box SG, box smoothing group, and we're going to save it as that. So go ahead and click save. And I already created this previously, so I'm just going to overwrite that file. And here in our next rollout, our FBX export, um, there's going to be a few things that we're going to want to make sure that we have and don't have. Um, what we are definitely going to want to have is smoothing groups for um, exporting our FBX with our smoothing groups. And we want to make sure that we do not have triangulate ticked. Okay, so we want to make sure that that one's unchecked. And we should be good for the rest of it. So um, scrolling down here to advanced options, um, and inside of our rollout we have units, axis, we can actually change this back to the default Y up. Just messing around with some settings. So in, under our advanced options under this rollout, go down to FBX file format and go ahead and make sure that um, our binary is going to be our default, but let's select ASCII. We want that one. Okay. Um, go ahead and click OK, and that one has been saved. Okay. So this next one with our more uh, with more geometry, let's go ahead and save that one as an OBJ. So same process, export export selected, and we want to save this as an OBJ instead of an FBX. And we're going to save this as box EG for extra geometry. Okay. Go ahead and click save, and I already made that one as well so I'm going to replace it and make sure that our faces is set the quads right here and our preset it can be done but go ahead and go and if you're going to export that in the mud box go ahead and select mud box and we'll just hit export and it gives us our option or it gives us a list of all of our tries and our quads and we just click done we're okay okay so now we're going to jump into mud box and see what's going on with our models okay so we are in mud box and we're going to go up here to the top file import and we're going to import our box with extra geometry and our box with our smoothing groups. And it's important to note that there's a difference between an FBX and an OBJ import into Mudbox, and the difference is going to be scaling. Um, besides the smoothing group option that FBX has, scaling is going to be a big issue. So when we import these, um, we didn't create any UVs. We're not going to worry about that for both of them. So when we import these, inside of Max, they were both the same scale. Inside a mat or inside a mud box, they are not the same scale. So, just be aware of that um, that issue. I haven't figured out why, but uh, as soon as I do, I'll probably post something and describe why that is. Okay, so let's subdivide these by hitting Shift D, and let's give it a subdivision of six or seven. Okay, that's good. And on this next one, let's go ahead and do a subdivision of six or seven. And just something to be aware of with these models, they both import, they both have their hard edges, and we're subdividing, so that's a good thing. Um, just be aware of looking at this model, um, because we had all of those 
uh, rectangles that this may run into issues down the line with sculpting. So there is your import of hard edge surfaces inside of Mudbox.